19th of December, 2017. My name is Linda Jean Belton Shumway. My father, Vernon Dudley Belton, years ago, wrote some brief memories of his mother, Alice Myrtle Renault. These memories will be read by my son, Matthew Vernon Shumway, after which I will expand on what we know about my grandmother, Alice Myrtle Renault. Vernon describes the life of his mother in these words. My mother was born the 28th day of October, 1883, near Dandridge, Tennessee. She was raised on a large farm where she learned much about hard work. Her schooling was somewhat sparse, as it was for most children in those days. Her parents needed her help on the farm because there was so much to be done. She learned how to be a good cook and would cook for the ranch hands when harvest time came around. Even though she was a domestic, she was also very much a tomboy and loved to laugh and have fun. On the 6th day of August, 1899, she married my father, Charles Calvin Belton, in Anthony Harper, Kansas. They moved there and began their own farm. When I was about three years old, my parents moved to California. After a few years, my mother became dissatisfied with her life. She wanted better things which my father was unable to give her. Not long after that, my father and mother separated. I was at the tender age of 10 when all this happened. It was so hard for me to see my mother leave. Time would pass and then mother would come back, but things didn't work out and she would leave again. This happened so many times that finally I would hide when it was time for her to leave again because it was so hard for me to say goodbye. She worked in a restaurant as a pastry cook most of the time for her living. Later my parents divorced and my mother married Elmer Knowles. They moved to Watsonville, California. The following gives additional information to the background of Alice's ancestors. Alice Myrtle Renault was born in Dandridge, Tennessee to John Wesley Renault and Mary Ann Renault. They were cousins. The town was named after President George Washington's wife, Martha Dandridge, and is adjacent to the French Broad River. Alice's fifth great-grandfather on the Renault line was Louis Renaud III. Family tree shows him born in France in 1677. At age 19, he married a French girl in Virginia named Margaret Louise Fout. The couple had 11 children born in Prince William County, Virginia. In about 1800, the Renault ancestors of Alice settled in Jefferson County, Tennessee. Life was hard for the families in the wilderness of Jefferson County, who mainly lived in one-room cabins with earthen floors. The settlers were no strangers to clearing land using animals and simple tools. They used long rifles to hunt and protect themselves from Indians. Some family members had descriptive titles such as constable, border patrol, Indian lookouts, or revolutionary patriot. As new families moved into the area, specialized professions such as blacksmith, doctors, coopers, millers, innkeepers, and merchants were welcomed. Men could replace their simple wooden tools with tools of iron. Boots and heavy shoes were still needed by both sexes for safety and endurance. Staples such as tea, coffee, sugar, flour, fabric, and leather were much needed. Merchants and peddlers would now make it easier for the people of this time to obtain some of the necessities and comforts of life. The Renault's chosen religion was Methodist, as one might guess from the fact that Alice's father's name was John Wesley Renault, and her mother's father was named Isaac Wesley Renault. John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist religion. We get an idea of their political leaning from voting data. The residents in Jefferson County voted against the Ordinance of Secession from the Union referendum on June 8, 1861, by a margin of 1,987 to 603. Marianne Renault's maternal side grandparents were Robert or Bobby Birchfield and Anna Evalista Malcolm. One Birchfield son, named William, had taken his wife, Sarah Denton, and ten children by wagon to the Oklahoma, Kansas area in 1878, 
and through letters had convinced his circuit-riding Methodist preacher brother, Joseph R. Birchfield, to bring as many of his followers as possible from the East Tennessee Hill Country and join him on the flat Kansas prairie land. On January 28, 1884, soon after sunrise, 40 members of the congregation met in Dandridge on the banks of the French Broad River, where a large flatboat was waiting to take them to Knoxville. Reverend Joseph R. Birchfield prayed God's blessings on the venture, and someone in the crowd started singing, Shall We Gather by the River, written by Robert Lowry in 1864. Shall we gather by the river, where bright angels' feet have trod, with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God? Yes, we'll gather by the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather wide the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. The John Wesley Reno and Marianne Reno family were in this group. Their seventh child, Alice, was born in 1883 in Dandridge, and the eighth child, Olive, was born in 1886 in Anthony Harper, Kansas. Marianne's father, Isaac Wesley Reno, and mother, Cynthia Birchfield, were not in the group. Isaac had died at age 23, and Cynthia had remarried to Christopher Miller. Isaac's brother James and his family are in the 1885 Harper County census, but John Wesley and Marianne have not been found in this census. It could be that they were living on the Oklahoma side of the state line at that time. The Tennessee newcomers helped the population in Harper County increase from 4,100 in 1880 to 13,300 in 1890, ten years later. This photo shows Alice's granddaughter, Linda Belton Shumway, standing in front of the Methodist Church, seven miles south of Anthony, built by the Joseph Birchfield Congregation. There is a church sign welcoming all in front of the church. Joseph R. is buried in the cemetery behind the church. At times, this area was called Little Tennessee. In 1899, Alice married Charles Calvin Belton, who was aged 26. Alice was aged 15. They likely married in the Birchfield Church. The beautiful Harper County Courthouse in Anthony was not finished until 1908. This photo shows the family standing in front of their sod house in about 1900. It appears that life on the prairie was not easy. From right to left they are John Wesley, Olive, Marianne, Janola, Charles, Calvin, Alice, Chester, Leon, and Della. The 1900 census shows Allie, or Alice, and Calvin living in the home of Allie's parents on the Oklahoma side of the state line. They have been married one year. Allie is age 16 and Calvin is age 27. In earlier Belton records, Allie was known as Allie Johnson Renault. Allie is a nickname for Alice, but the origin of the name Johnston is a mystery. In the 1910 census, they are living in Anthony. Calvin's mother, Sarah Ellen Blankenship Belton, age 64, is living with them. Allie's first child, Eula, died at birth in 1901, so the census shows five children born but four living. This photo shows Calvin and Allie with four of their children. 
Blanche, Ines, Vernon, and Bernice. Florence, or Larry, was their last child. He was born in Anthony in 1913, and soon after that they moved to Colton, California. By 1920 they are living in Fresno, where Charles Calvin worked in the Sun Raisin plant. Alice was a lovely looking woman as shown in this photo. Calvin has a rather large mustache in this photo of him and Alice. The 1920 census shows the complete family in Fresno, California. Calvin is age 45 and his occupation is laborer farm. Allie is age 35, Bernice age 17, Ines age 14, Blanche age 11, Vernon age 10, and Lawrence age 7. When Allie separated from Charles, the girls went with her, and the boys stayed with Charles Calvin. A marriage record for Allie Belton and Joseph Elmer Knowles has not been found, nor has the 1930 census showing Allie been found. However, the 1930 census for Joseph Elmer Knowles shows him single, living with his parents in Watsonville. The 1940 census shows that Elmer is married still living with his parents, but at 1550 Waller Street in San Francisco. At the top of the next page is Myrtle Knowles, daughter-in-law, born in Tennessee. Her age is given as 45, but she is actually aged 57. The Belton kids living in Santa Barbara got to see their grandma Reno only a few times. In 1949, Allie was still living at 1550 Waller Street when she got sick. She was taken to the St. Mary's Hospital where she died. The funeral record for Allie says she died at age 64 from acute bilateral pyelonephritis. It says she was born 28th of October, 1884. 1883 is the date used in family tree. Elmer was a military man, and, and Find a Grave shows her burial location as the Golden Gate National Cemetery in San Bruno. Note that the headstone says she was born about 5th of March, 1896. Grandma Allie Reno, we are sorry for all the hard times you went through. Your son Vernon loved you very much.